admittedly that wasn't very good, but let me explain that I've only been learning music for about half an hour. And the fact that I can perform these little ditties with such uh, accomplishment is entirely due to the unique teaching method of Candida Tobin. Now, you might notice that on both these instruments, there are little bits of coloured paper attached to each note here on the recorder and also along the notes of the piano. And these are identical to the colours on my musical score. Let's meet its inventor, Candida Tobin. Could you briefly tell me how your system actually works? It's not very easy to tell you briefly because it does encompass all age groups, all abilities and all instruments. But um, this board, for instance, will show you the notation strip, which is this. The children can make it in uh, this form and uh, through this they can find many musical facts, such as scales. A scale is just a pattern and from this strip they can find their scales and, for instance, here, I have found the scale of C, which is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then from this scale, the children will then find their three primary chords. And they do this merely by jumping around the circle like this, every other note, until they get back to C. And you'll find they find their three primary chords. The first one, C, E to G. And there's your C, E to G. The next one starts on this note you just ended with, and you have G, B, to D, to making the G seventh chord, and the last chord being the F chord, which should be F, A, and home to C. And as every music student knows, that's your three primary chords. And with those three primary chords, the children can harmonize all their folk songs and all their carols. For instance, here's a little tune, and this would be about the, the most simple tune that uh, the babies, you know, five-year-olds could harmonize. And they see that in the first bar, they have a yellow note and an orange note. And you have a yellow note and an orange note in the chord of C. You've got a yellow note in the chord of F, but you haven't got an orange note. So they would choose the chord of C to harmonize that bar. Then we have a brown note and a blue. And there's a brown note and a blue note here. There's a brown, there's a blue. It wouldn't be this one, there's a brown note there, but no blue. So they choose the F chord to harmonize that bar. Here we've got a purple and a red. So here's a purple and a red. So they would choose their G chord for this bar. And here we have one note C, and they choose the most important chord, which they've learned as their first chord, and we end on C. So they learn the, the first basic principles of harmony in such a simple way. And also, in fact, they, right from the start, they uh, associate the yellow with the C and the blue with the A and yes. so on. They don't say yellow, they say C. As soon as they see yellow, they just say C. Uh, each letter name is given a, a, a colour, and the children learn these colours through a little game they play, which is very simple. Within ten minutes, they've identified the colour with the letter name. Well, talking of different instruments, there's another multicoloured guitar here. Um, does this work in the same way as the recorders and pianos we've yes. been looking at earlier? Yes. You see, for instance, if you wanted the chord of G, now, as I said here, the chord of G is G, B, D. You get the red, green, purple. And all you have to do is to look at your open strings. If you ping a string like that, it's called open. So the children, all the adults, because I teach as many adults as I do children, they look at these open strings. They're colored there and they're colored there. This open string is red, so that's a G. That's green, so that's B, and that's purple, so it's D. So they realize those three all belong to the G chord. But this one is naughty, you see, it's orange. It shouldn't be orange, it should be red, green, or purple. So come down until you find a red, green, and purple. There's one, it's red. So the student knows that by putting their finger there, they're going to get the note G. It's not just a haphazard of not knowing what you're doing. They do know that that is making it a G. They know that string is B, that is G, that is D. So that's going to be the G chord. And if they wanted to change that blue note, which doesn't belong to the chord, well then they could come down here and they'd find a green note there, which is B, and change this orange one, come down, they'd find a red note G there. So they can go right through. Well, for most of the children that are actually playing the guitar, mm -hmm. how long does it take them um, so they can play a, a simple tune? Well, I run a six-week course. Mm. Um, after six weeks, they know a lot. They know about scales, they know the structure of scales, they know major, minor, diminished, augmented chords, and they know exactly what all the notes are here and why they're here. This is the whole idea of colour music, is to know why things are as they are. It's really a way of interpreting black music. I'm not doing away with black music. I'm just deciphering it so they do understand it.
Now, some of the games, in fact, you've got here on this table, how do they actually operate? For instance, the, these letters here. Well, these, these are just lengths of nodes. We've got them coloured, but this is just for a particular game. But the child can see that that is a long note. They can also see that that is half a long note. That is quarter. And these are eighths, which come in twos. And there are many, many different games that they can play with these shapes. And the same thing happens mm -hmm. here. These, again, are cards with the length of the notes. There's your whole note again. There's your half. And they have games rather like Snap and Pelmanism. And they play these games, but they learn the lengths of their notes. I see. So before they can actually play an instrument, I mean, they, they would study this kind of theory at a, at a very early, early age. Yes, I let them know the length of notes to their very first lesson. And then they go straight on to pitch. And that's the color of their notes. And they play those with these games uh, in this little book here, where you see they color the notes up here, and then they turn over and they color these various designs and patterns. They learn all their space colors here and all their line colors here, but they wouldn't say blue, they'd say A. So they color that A, that C, that E, and that G, and they realize there's a pattern right the way through. And they know that, for instance, A is blue, right? Right, right from the beginning. Right from and when the beginning. they say A, they think blue. That sounds splendid. Yeah. Now, you've written many books, actually, some of which are on the table here. Um, do you sell, do you, are these um, especially for music teachers or what? No. These are for um, the classroom and mm. for individuals. In fact, a lot of them are sent to the children in the bush and places like that so they can teach themselves. And they are self-explanatory. These are beautifully printed uh, in full colour, very difficult to print so accurately as this. But they make a very attractive book, and the child really can read their music because there are none of these um, well-known tunes, like Go and Tell Aunt Nancy. They have just got to learn to sight read. Each per piece has been specially written for the book. So, in fact, any parent can order one of these books from, it, from any shop? Oh, yes. 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 Well, mm -hmm. look, Candida, how did you come to invent this method in the first place? Well, I think, really, it is that I am a teacher and I enjoy teaching and I want people to enjoy their music and to love it as much as I do. And I think it was the frustration of knowing that I couldn't put black music over uh, to the standard that I would have liked to have put it over. And I realized, because it helped me, the color helped me, that it would also help the children. So I've, uh, I've been working on it for 15 years, mind you, and perfected it. I believe over those 15 years you've had a little bit of opposition from your colleagues in the music profession. Well, I do find that the, um, the real musician, the, the, the person who's really got there, is for me. He knows what I'm trying to do and he's behind me. But I do find that the mediocre musician who has taken years struggling to get there is rather annoyed that I can dismiss harmony so quickly. I don't dismiss it, but they think I do it because I can teach somebody it in half an hour. They think it's belittling it, when it isn't, in fact. How many schools actually use your method? Oh, hundreds. What, in yes. just in this country or oh, abroad? Well, well, no, in Australia, in New Zealand, uh, Finland, Germany, all over the world, really. That's yes. quite widespread, in fact. Yes. Um, what sort of success rating have you had over the years? I mean, how do you know that your method is actually better than the conventional method? Well, I've had wonderful letters back from people. I've had letters saying that we have literally 100% participation in our schools. Well, the interesting thing about your method is that, in fact, children can compose almost as soon as they can play. Yes. Yes, I'm a great believer in the children learning to compose straight away because if they are successful in composing, they then want to find out more. They want to say, well, we don't want to only use three primary chords. Aren't there any other chords? And I can say, yes. All you have to do is jump a different way around your circle and you're going to find three alternative chords. All these are minor chords and they can start using right. those. All right, now, come on. What are we going to do here now? Somebody different. Yes. Repeat. Now, we want to cheer this tune up a little bit. Hands up. What, we, what can we do to cheer the whole tune up a little bit? Yes. Put some passing notes in. All right. Can anybody see where we could have a passing note? Yes? Come on, you come and put it up for me. One lovely place for a passing note. Let's see if he knows which one it is. Good boy, that's lovely. Pop it in for you. Good. One, two, it's going to be ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. -ta -ta -ta. 
and Millfield School at Buntingford in Hertfordshire, just one of the many schools in the area where Canada's system has been successfully used for many years. The children here, aged between 6 and 10, composed this tune in about 15 minutes and immediately were able to play it straight from the score without any rehearsal. The ability to write their own music at an early age not only broadens their understanding of musical theory, but also makes the whole exercise even more enjoyable. Well, Candida, your method seems most excellent, but why do you think it is that more schools don't actually use it? Well, I suppose um, one thing I have got to do, and let's bring out a lot more books. It needs a lot more books to um, support the whole system. I've got a guitar book coming out, a piano book coming out, one on songwriting coming out, and so on. Um, and I would like a little more support. Do you think it's important to send these round to teachers' training colleges as well as schools? Yes, I would like the teachers to be trained into the system. method of teaching music, Candida herself has all the necessary qualities essential in a good teacher. Enthusiasm, dedication and tireless energy. And your second finger across on your other G. Right? And that corresponds to this chord here that's written on your stage. So let's hear your sixth string page of your thumb. Good. So let's go through that thumb, thumb, thumb. Finger, it finger, does seem rather finger, a pity that Candida's system is isn't more universally accepted. When it's so obviously successful for all age groups and on any instrument. 